found this beautiful reference photograph on Paint My Photo and just loved everything about it. I love the pink. I love the reflections in the water. I love the time of day and wanted to see if I could try my hand at it. Stay tuned and see how I interpreted this photograph. Okay, greetings. This is the first video that I've done using my new overhead camera system. So you're going to be looking down. I'm looking up at my at my screen. It's such a different perspective. I'm used to the camera being behind my right shoulder. So hopefully this is going to be better for you. You're going to be able to really see me as I mix things on my palette and apply them to the canvas at the same time. I'm going to show you this photo that I'm going to be doing um, my painting from today and it's from uh, Paint My Photo. I just love this painting. I love the color or the photograph. I love the colors in it. I love the light reflecting. And I was going to do a horizontal and at the last minute I decided to do it vertically because really it's the sun and the reflection that I'm more interested in. I'm going to be careful not to do that right in the center of my canvas, but I'm going to move it over to the right just a little bit. I decided that I would try to premix my colors ahead of time and just make sure I was satisfied. I've got cad yellow medium, cad red medium, I've got brilliant pink, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and, and uh, another pile of brilliant pink. And so I just started mixing the ultramarine and the burnt sienna and a lot of white to get these different piles of these kind of purpley blues for clouds and for that top of the sky. For the pink area, I used um, a touch of yellow, a touch of the red, and a touch of pink. And I just kept blending, mixing, adding some white until I got the right consistency. So I, I think I've got something pretty close. When we get on the canvas, we may <laughs> change our mind. Um, I'm going to be using, to start out, a super large brush. This is a, a Rosemary & Company Classic Long Flat, size 12. I like these brushes because the ends are very... Um, I call them ruffled. They're, they're not even or sharp. Like, let me show you another brush just to compare. You can see how sharp that brush is, the ends of it compared to this one. So I like when I'm trying to get a soft edge, I'm going to dip this in some water and I'm going to go into my lightest gray mixture and I'm just going to get in some of this background. I think I'm also going to put some Stay Dry Medium on my palette. I don't think I'm going to mix it into the paints, but I'm going to have a little pile here where I can dip in, particularly when we get down into the other colors. I'm going to make sure that things blend nicely and that Stay Dry Medium will help your colors blend more smoothly without those harsh transition lines. I'm just looking at where this light gray is on the photograph. We don't have to be a slave to the photograph, but I think this is a beautiful sky color. And then as it starts to go down, uh, we see a little bit, a little glow. We're going to have a dark cloud here, then we're going to have a little glow of, of some pink. And you see I've still got some blue on my brush and it's mingling in with that pink. I think that's just fine. In fact, I, I like that. I might even uh, do that more intentionally right through here. Just transition. Not to sound like Bob Ross, but you know, this is one of those places where you could have some happy accidents too and that, that would be fine. Here it's getting a little blue or I'm just dipping into this slightly bluer pile. My brush was pretty wet up in here. That's almost more like a wash than than paint where I'm, I've got something a little thicker going on down here, but I think it's pretty and light. I'm going to continue um, to use this pile as we go down. I may have to mix a little more. That's, that is the problem with using such a big brush. It goes through a lot of paint, um, but it does give you nice big soft strokes. 
when we get to this side, we start seeing some pink. Hmm. Let me see where our horizon line is going to be. I think it's going to be, let's, let's drop it really low. I'm going to put that horizon line in with the ultramarine and a, let's, let's just put it down here just to give us a reference point. I'm going to clean my brush because I want to get some of that clear pink color without it being muddied. In fact, I think I'm going to just drop down to the next size brush. This is an 8, same company, same type of brush. I'm going to go ahead and put this kind of orangey pink in. This is where I think I'm going to dip into my slow dry medium so that I can get some soft edges. I'm going to dip into the one that's a little more pink. Some color up in here. I'm just kind of softening this a little bit. Now I'm going to dip into my slow dry medium again and go back into this lighter blue. Just kind of run that feather that end of those edges. It's okay that that's blending together a little bit. I think that's pretty. We want this to look like a glow. We don't want it to look like there's a harsh beginning and end. I'm going to take some out of this pile and put some white in it. Lightening this up a little bit. I'll go back into this medium because I feel like my I feel like we're getting too sharp of an edge right there. Oops. Gosh. Well, there's a problem I didn't see coming. See all these spots? That's from my water jar. Huh. Well, with my table stand now, I don't have room on the sides anymore to put my water. That's too bad. Hmm. Well, so let me run over that again. I'm going to go ahead and put in the sun, which is just going to be uh, white, primarily white, just with a touch of yellow. And that's just too much. Here, let me get some more white on here. So I've got way too much yellow on there. I really wanted white. That, that cad yellow medium is such a strong yellow. But I wanted to get just a really strong sun right in there. Just to 
get our location and where we might be able to use that yellow is in the water I notice that has sort of a pinkish orange glow on the either side on either side of it as well in the water all right let's go back to this pink Fairly strong pink, but I love that color. Tiniest touch of yellow in it. Not much. Not much. So that's a little stronger than what we had. You know, I, th I think this is one of those paintings that it helps me a lot to have a reference photo, but at the same time, it needs to look good as a painting. And if you're if you want to do something that's different from the photograph and it's you have that artistic license to do that we're just trying to kind of get a glow out from that and I think I'm gonna add a little more white to this blue my brush is fairly wet. I'm going to go back over these edges a little bit just to kind of soften this transition. So it looks like that pink really fades out into the blue. That's pretty. Let's do this other side. To let that dry a little bit. It's kind of pulling the paint back off. All right, while that's drying a little bit, let me go back in and let's put this little island in. And it looks almost black. I don't think I want to use pure black. Let's try a uh, sap green and ultramarine. That'll give us a pretty pretty dark green. See if that'll be enough to give us the effect that we want when we get another brush. So I'm just dropping down to a smaller, this same type of brush. This is a four. And I'm just taking the ultramarine and the sap green to just give you a, a real super dark green, almost black. And I'm just going to start dropping in some some vegetation there. Let's up uh, before we go to the water. Let's let's get these clouds in. Gosh, I don't want to be dripping water over my over our, our painting. So let's go into this deeper shadow color and I'm just going to I'm going to hold this brush very lightly and I'm just going to loosely put in some clouds. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure on there. I'm not getting a solid stroke. I'm letting this be kind of feathery. I had a little green on my brush. Let me see if we can wash that off one more time. I had a lot of green on my brush. <laughs> I 
that's better. Let me get back. So that's really about the only dark cloud we've got up there. I'm just gonna kind of push that edge out a little bit just to just to soften it. We've got a little bit down in here. Now I am scrubbing in just a little bit, coming across that pink. I'm gonna add a little more blue up in here. Put a little across from the sun right in here. Well, I'm still reaching over the painting, aren't I? When you've been painting for years and years and years and you've always had your water on the left side, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of hard to make that change. So I'm just kind of scrubbing in this second layer of blue. There's a pale pink cloud underneath that blue. I'm going to take our pink and just add a little more white to it and come right up around the edge of that. There's some really pale pink clouds up in here. It's too, too bright, or too pink. Let me wipe that down. Even a touch of yellow might just cream that up just a little bit, not much. Just soften it. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm, I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it. I'm just kind of letting it lightly float on so it looks soft and organic. Might put a little bit up here. And then it gets a little stronger pink. And you can do these shapes any any way you want. I'm just looking at my reference and sort of following that. But if I wasn't filming this, I probably wouldn't be paying as much attention to the reference at this point. Now, when it drops down to the next cloud, it's slightly more orange. So I'm going to take the same pink and I'm going to dip into the, the this more orange pile. I'm going to kind of mix those two together and just get this illusion that we're getting closer to the, the glow of the light source. Doing this pretty loose. I think this is really pretty. I like the softness of that. I'm going to drop a little color up in here. I might go over this area one more time. I, I just feel like I'm seeing a lot of canvas through that. Thank you. 
and I'm going to do a ring, sort of a big loose ring around that sun. It's going to get a little softer and lighter on the outside edges. So I'm, I'm going to exaggerate that a little bit just so you can see that that is a ring coming around, coming out from that. On that more orangey coral tone into it. This edge bothers me a little bit. I feel like it's just still, um, I'd like it a little glowier. So let me just see if I can push this pink out a little bit. Just kind of soften that edge. I think that's pretty. I'm going to stop and let this dry for a minute and then we're going to work on the water. I've been playing with some colors here um, and thinking about the water and I took some of the ultramarine and the burnt sienna and just uh, a touch of white and that's going to be the darkest water on this side. Um, we might even just use the pure ultramarine for the waves. And then as we get closer to the light reflection, I've added some white and a little of the pink in. So I think that's going to be, let's, let's see how that looks on this right hand side. I think the main thing is going to be to get the values in correct, in, put the values in as correctly as possible. I think that's a beautiful color. I like that a lot. I like that it's dark, but it's still got some life to it. And then as it gets closer to the light source, it's going to get pinker. I'm still using this rough little brush, which is making it a little difficult To do anything precise around this reflection, which is fine. I hope you can see this with my hand being on top of it since we're filming from above. This is just a whole new experience for me. I'm sure when I edit this I'm gonna realize I have to do a few things differently. And then on this side, we'll start with that same. See if I had a sharper edge brush I could get a cleaner edge right there, but I don't. drop a little more pink uh, out in here. I feel like that's and I like working while the paint is still nice and soft and seems to be responding well. And then it's going to get it's going to get much darker. This is the ultramarine in the burnt sienna pile and I'm just adding a little white to it. Just trying to kind of get this blocked in. I'm not using any slow dry medium at this point. I'm just dropping it in. I 
I usually paint the edges of my canvas. I didn't try to do it with this since I'm filming from above, but that would certainly. Okay, so now I'm going to, I've kind of wiped my brush off and I'm just going to go back to this transition and blend these a little bit. Pushing back into the dark and pushing forward into the light, just trying to, and I'm not trying to get a, just a straight line here. I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to um, have some irregularity and so you really feel like you've got a little bit of a glow going on there. So I'm going to take this little round brush that I used earlier to put the sun in and I'm going to just go into my ultramarine blue and I'm just going to drop in a few lightly, a few dark lines. to get the feel that there's some water and some movement. That gets lighter as it gets into this light. And it actually crosses this line in, in some places. I think I got it too light there. And I'm not doing much. I'm just, uh, just want to get the, the feel for some, for some waves here. I'm going to go over this one more time. I feel like that looks, uh, it just needs another coat. And I think I'm going to, this continues to look too yellow to me, even though it looks very yellow in the photograph. I think in real life it would probably look creamier or whiter. I'm not crazy about that cloud and I'm not sure why, but I think I'm just going to drop a little of our blue and pink mixture on top of that just to make that a little more interesting. Kind of gives you the feeling it's catching some glow from the bottom. Feel like these edges still look a little hard. I'm going to take my brush. It's very wet. And I'm just kind of pressing that out. It's lightening it up a lot, which is it's okay. Just trying to get a soft, super soft edge. So now that I've gotten away from it, there are two things that are bothering me a little bit or things that I think could be improved. One is this tree line looks pretty uninteresting. I'm, I'm going to go into some black after all. This is actually more like a Payne's Gray. I'm taking a fan brush and I'm just going to see if I can't create a more interesting edge 
for this to look more a little more like a real tree line and get a little more variation to it so you're going to see me do that the other thing that's bothering me a little bit is i feel like this line is way too wide and i'd like to see it thinner and more irregular so i'll probably go back and rework that a little bit so i'll show you uh how that ends up i think this can be pretty because it's going to let some glow come through thing with about a fan brush you've really got to keep it turned and moving or you you'll end up with a real consistent looking stroke which you don't want to do but i think that's pretty seeing some of that pink coming through yeah and then we can just fill in down here with the with the black take some of this pink and purple mixture gosh my paint has really dried out You know, if you do this and you get it too thin, you can always go back and add some of the yellow. Actually, I don't, I don't like what I'm ending up with, so I'm just going to paint over this and I'm going to let it dry. And then I'm going to figure out what the right brush is and I'm going to go back over it with that yellow and do put in more just a thinner ziggy kind of line and I think that's going to give us what we need. Sorry that just sometimes it takes a second pass at something to get it right. You know it's funny I painted that out and left that little bit of light there with a glow underneath. I don't really don't mind that but um, so I've got this little little bitty angled brush and I'm going to put our, our white yellow combination on that and I'm just going to try this again I'm just wiggling it just a little bit with a little more there at the end a little water at the at the top Well, and so often happens with me, I got away from the painting and I kept seeing things I wasn't happy with. So I redid that reflection one more time. I added more pink to the water and I added a lot more pink to the sky and I think it really helped. I just kind of slightly scrubbed in some more pink over some of the blue, over some of the clouds. And I think it just gave it more of a beautiful glow which is one of the things that attracted me to that photograph in the first place so while i was trying to let the photograph be my inspiration i didn't want to be a slave to it so i'm glad i kind of parted company with it a little bit there at the end here's the photograph and here's the final painting i hope you've enjoyed this process with me if you'd like to see more of my work or see some um more in-depth instruction, I encourage you to visit my website where I've got all kinds of neat things there. And of course, if you'll subscribe to my YouTube channel, there's plenty of free stuff coming out all the time. Thanks a lot and God bless.